my my source is yung Schwartz 11th edition and this powerpoint was actually made by Dr. Adona so some are, I read some parts of the powerpoint and some are taken from ETLS um some other discussion I don't know where niya nakuha pero majority are taken from Schwartz so okay let's begin um, yung trauma sa Schwartz, isa sa pinakamahabang chapter ng Schwartz because napakaraming, um, napakaraming, napakaraming things to discuss, napakaraming organ systems that needs, needs to be discussed. So I'll just break it down to two lectures. Ako, sabi ni Dr. Odona tomorrow, may lecture pa daw. So for the first half, um, I'll start off with a brief introduction on trauma, yung ABCDEs, yung primary survey. So we have your initial evaluation versus this resuscitation of the injured patients. So upon um, seeing a trauma patient at the emergency room, um, as a doctor, as a trauma physician, as a surgeon, as a general practitioner, um, we have a guideline to follow when assessing a trauma patient before doing the initial management. So we have your primary, secondary survey. Your primary survey, we have your ABCDEs, your airway, breathing, circulation, which I will be discussing earlier. Your secondary survey, um, you must know the mechanisms and map patterns of injury. Kung ano ba to, um, gunshot, gunshot, stab wound, vehicular crash. Um, we have your regional assessment and special diagnostic tests. Um, these are done um, in adjunct to your physical examination history. So we have your diagnostics, your radiologic examinations. Um, third, we have your general principles of management. So your, your transfusion practices, your, for example, your massive transfusion protocol, prophylactic measures, your operative approaches and exposure, um, depending on the region or region or area of injury, your damage control um, survey. So for the introduction, trauma, according to Schwartz, it is the cellular disruption caused by environmental energy that's beyond the body's resilience. So when we say trauma, it is anything um, from vehicular crash, stab incident, a mauling, blunt abdominal trauma, abrasion, laceration in any region or any part of the body causing some form of injury, whether it be laceration, whether it be a abrasion, or whether it be um, internal injury caused by the blunt abdominal trauma. It is the most, uh, it's the third most common cause of death um, regardless of age and it contributes 9% of global mortality. So we have your Haddon matrix. Um, this table illustrates the factors that may contribute to the um, incident and trauma, into the incident of trauma, and what, what we may be able to um, identify and with what factors may we, that may, we may identify in, so that we may be able to prevent um, other future um, future incidents of such trauma cases. So we have your human factors. Um, for example, the patient comes in, the patient is um, intoxicated, the patient has a history of substance abuse, the patient has um, uh, cognitive or um, behavioral problems um, event such as an example those um, passengers that are not wearing seat belt those that are not wearing wearing any protective devices and post event so after the trauma the incident may be exacerbated if the patient has any comorbidities such as in this example an elderly man with a pre-existing medical condition so the vector, um, for example, uh, the cost of the trauma faulty break or the um, <clears throat> uh, the, uh, the 
uh, the event. So yung, the one that caused the, the trauma, the injury, for example, because of the faulty brakes, the, the car or the vehicle doesn't have an airbag. So it, it further exacerbates the trauma. So for the physical environment, kung asan yung, for example, for motor vehicular crash, if the road is slippery, or if there are no warning devices, if my obstructions are road, or if, for example, if you're in a, if you're in a near neighborhood na known for having um, hostile, um, hostile individuals, and for the event, yung immediate cause ng trauma. So for example, yun nga tree that is close to the road, and post event, the one that may exacerbate the trauma, the injuries rather, so slow response or poor rehabilitation program. For your socioeconomic environment, um, prevent alcohol offenses, and the post event, little help for reintegration. Uh, reintegrating rehab patients into society. So, yun yung, according to Haddon, yung causes, um, yung factors um, surrounding the concept of trauma. We have your human, your vector, your physical environment, and the socioeconomic environment, which may be altered um, to improve the morbidity and mortality of trauma patients. So, we have your terminologies. We have your penetrating and blunt trauma. So we have your stab wounds. So these are, are caused by either um, any sharp weapon or any even blunt weapon that causes um, breach in your skin barrier. So this may be any this may be anything from a knife or a makeshift. Um, weapon, wooden, or anything that may breach the skin. So, yun yung stab wound. Gunshot wound, it may be classified as high or low velocity. Your shotgun wound, basta anything that breaches the skin barrier, yun yung penetrating. Blunt abdominal trauma, those that does not breach the skin barrier that but causes a uh, an impact, forceful impact that that damages your internal organs as an effect. So first off, we have your initial evaluation and resuscitation of the injured patient. So yung primary survey, we have your A, B, C, D, E's. So we have your airway, breathing, circulation, disability, and exposure environment. So, um, ito yung parang steps to follow when you're assessing or when you're, when you have, you knew encountered a trauma patient at the emergency room. Let's say, for example, um, if you're manning the emergency room and a patient comes in, um, motor vehicular crash, so may multiple physical injuries, <clears throat> tachycardic hypotensive with multiple facial fractures, may multiple abrasions, chest and abdomen, may direct and remote tenderness abdomen area. So yung una mong unahin is first to establish the airway. So to, to establish the airway, if the patient has a poor GCS, so getting lethargic, or obtunded, you can insert an endotracheal tube. So for breathing, you must identify any factors that may compromise the breathing of the patient. So what are those? So we must assess the chest for any injuries. So rib fractures, yung, yung mentioned by, by Schwartz, yung tension, pneumothorax, yung open pneumothorax, yung... Um, cardiac tamponade, circulation. So you must um, insert two large bore catheter, two large bore cannulas to immediately, if needed, kung kailangan mo transfuse some blood, 
to kel- kailangan mo mag-resuscitate to mabigay mo agad yung isotonic solution if the patient is losing blood or the patient is dehydrated is the patient if, if, if the patient is tachycardic and you must check the sensorium if the patient has any um cognitive or behavioral disabilities in the first place kaya yun yung, yun yung naging cause ng injury and check if the patient is exposed if, if the patient is exposed to any harmful or toxic chemicals that may have that may have caused the injury so kung burn patient ba yan kung burn caused by scalding injury or burn caused by chemical injury so kailangan mo din yung identify so yun sunod-sunod hindi man kailangan na sunod-sunod but they must be taken into priority. Pwede pagpasok ng patient, secure the airway agad. At the same time, secure ka ng line for circulation. At the same time, another person is checking for problems or concerns regarding the patient's breathing and um, exposure to harm- harmful chemicals. So yun. So so pagdating ng patient sa emergency room always kailangan pina kaya naka-highlight yung vital signs kasi yun yung yun yung isa sa pagbabasihan natin kung paano natin i-assess yung patient kung if the patient is having is in shock so alam natin na tachycardic or hypotensive. So, alam natin na kailangan natin i-prioritize. So, i-prioritize. So, alam natin yung triage. Yung unahin natin yung patient. Alam natin yung gagawin. Kailangan magbigay ng, ng IV boluses or kailangan mag-prepare ng blood for transfusion. So, yun. For airway, so we must check any signs of airway obstruction. So, what are the possible causes of airway obstruction? So, if the patient is has a poor um, GCS or Glasgow Coma Scale, or yung sensorium ng patient is depressed or below 13 or below 9, yung patient is, yung, yung tongue ng patient, babagsak kasi yan sa lalamunan. So, yung breathing niya, yung air entry niya is severely depressed. Aside from that, if the patient is having, um, ito, if the patient has any cerebral injury, so yung breathing din niya may compromise, especially if increase yung ICP, if you're anticipating na, mag, na meron ng um, herniation, if you're anticipating na may epidural or subdural bleed. So yun, kailangan natin may establish yung airway by, yeah? um, first, if, and stable, stable naman yung patient, walang problema, you can use your nasal cannula or face mask. But if unstable yung patient, if depressed yung GCS, if you assess the patient, even, even though nakikita mong walang facial injury, walang facial obstruction, pero depressed yung GCS, yung breathing nila is hindi na regular. So despite humihinga yung patient, yung air entry is depressed so decrease pa rin yung oxygen yung oxygen na pumapasok sa katawan so immediate intubation in airway support is needed so other causes of air, air, airway obstruction so if the patient has multiple facial fractures so airway endotracheal intubation is is contraindicated so what we can do is we can do cricothyroidotomy or we can do tracheostomy tube insertion to bypass the facial um, injury to immediately have access for airway support. Next, check for breathing. So as I've mentioned earlier, um, any factors that compromises the breathing of the patient. So we have your tension, um, pneumothorax. So what is the difference between tension and open pneumothorax.
Do you have an idea? So what is pneumothorax in the first place? And what's the difference between tension and open pneumothorax? So yun, Rehay, yung may maaram. It's when air is entering the thorax. Yung thorax po, dok, the difference between tension and open. Hmm. The only thing I know about tension pneumothorax is that the difference is that the collection of air in the pleural space during inspiration it keeps going in tops in tension pneumothorax di rin na nagawasit air so nagko-collect mm. tight air nagto so continuous amo nagkakaadan agestinal shift pero it open kasi pwede pa mag-exchange an air mag-go out ma inside pero in tension kasi nagko-collect amo nagtitikaw mm. so yun tama yun um, pneumothorax is an abnormal collection of air in material space. So, dapat talaga wari to din uh, air. Because it's it causes parang restrictive um, expansion of your lung. For your open pneumothorax, um, we have an open connection between your plural space and your environment. So, lapas pasok yung air. Okay? Yung tension pneumothorax, parang one way valve yan. So, may there's entry of air to your in your plural space, pero hindi lalabas yung air. So, yung air doon nag-accumulate lang sa loob. So, yung plural space, mo lumalaki ng lumalaki until it causes restrictive expansion of your lung. And if it's it's massive enough, it causes decreased preload to your heart because it causes compression or it causes decreased venous inflow into your heart by compressing your large vessels. Okay? So, yun yung, patho yun yung pathophysiology na morbidity ng tension pneumothorax. So, because of your decreased preload, decreased cardiac output, so babagsak, magsak-sak yung patient. So, we need to manage those. For your open pneumothorax, kailangan natin evacuate yung air. But we don't do immediate CTT. And we, not, we don't close the wound immediately. Maglalagay muna tayo ng chest tube. After inserting the chest tube, that's then na ito-close natin yung sugat. Okay? Because pag i-close mo agad yung sugat, it may cause retention of the air. It may cause tension yung motorax. Hindi mo maklose ng mayos so pasap yung hangin, hindi nalabas. So it may exas it will it will exacerbate the condition. So instead, maglalagay ka muna ng drainage. Maglalagay mo muna ng chest tube. Para once you close it, once you're in the process, so it will not cause um, further accumulation of air sa loob. For tension pneumothorax, the immediate, if tatanungin kayo, ano yung immediate management? Yung immediate management is needling. Okay, second ICS, mitlobicular line, immediately the compress the pure space.
Dok, naka mute ka po. So for um, tracheobronchial injury, it usually happens during um, penetrating trauma. So there, there's violation of your tracheobronchial tree causing aggress of your air to your pleural space, causing pneumothorax. So yun nga, again, yung pathology causes, it restricts the expansion of your lung. It causes mediastinal shift, thereby compressing your your great vessels, decreasing payload, and yung decreasing cardiac output and causing shock. Yung management naman, yung tracheobronchial, yung tracheobronchial injury is majority of those um, resolved um, spontaneously, but kailangan ma, ma resolve mo yung accumulation of air through chest tube. But if persistent yung air leak, the next step is to do open thoracotomy. To look, to locate and to repair the tracheobronchial injury. Yung next is flail chest. So, an yung definition ng flail chest? Then, ano yung pathognomonic um, physical examination ng flail chest? There is paradoxical inspiration, like it ins when the patient inspires, by say yung lungs na expand or chest, it goes inward. That's when the exhales. It's paradoxical. It's different. Sometimes it can be the nose through X-ray. So. Okay, um, yun, yun yung paradoxical breathing. So instead, na pag mag inhale ka, dapat mag expand yung lung, yung flail chest, parang mag -re retract yung lung mo. Yung characteristic injury ng flail chest is you're, you have multiple rib fractures, contiguous ribs. So like my fracture car ribs 2, 3, 4, sunod, sunod. Then sa ribs 2, 3, and 4, you have multiple um, fractures per rib. Right? So, so rib 2, may magkatabi kang mga fracture. So rib 3 and 4, ganun din. So yun. Um, yung management naman ng flail chest is um, <clears throat> pain management. According to Schwartz, we can do positive pressure ventilation. Um, if, you're, if you have rib fracture, you can at the same time most, yung iba, most of the time, you can you also have a continue, continuous um, hemo or pneumothorax. So, chest tube is also inserted. If persistent naman yung, if uh, multiple rib fractures are involved, you can do um, plates and screws to stabilize the rib. In inserting, a, in inserting the chest tube, ano yung site of chest tube insertion and ano yung direction through which you insert your chest tube? Ano yung nasa Schwartz? Close tube thoracostomy pala, CTT. San katutusok? San sang part ng chest katutusok ng chest tube? to evacuate your pneumo or hemothorax or any fluid collection. Saan yung safest? Fourth or fifth intercostal space. Tama Yun, okay. Um, yun, fourth or fifth um, intercostal space, um, mid axillary line, yung iba anterior axillary line, and your tube must be directed posterior superiorly, so pupunta sa likod ng rib. Bakit sa fourth, bakit sa fourth or fifth ICS? Bakit hindi pwede sa six, sa seven, sa eight? Hindi ma hit yung intercostal ano. 
kasi um usually it's it's there um it's the one yung ginagamit nila for safety kasi yun yung location ng diaphragm at it's pinakamataas upon um, expiration yun yung pinakamataas na border ng diaphragm nasa long T4 for intercostal space so yung yung gina, yun yung gin, sinabi ng niche words para lesser yung chances of any injury sa diaphragm pero um yung turo na sa amin dito you can insert your chest tube the lowest intercostal space as you can as long as it's intrathoracic Pero for exam purposes, so fourth or fifth ICS, the axillary line, direct led posterior superiorly. Okay. So for circulation, um, what are the life threatening conditions that may pose um, problems with your circulation? So we have your shock. For your trauma, most common uh, cause of shock is your hemorrhagic. So your hemorrhagic shock is caused by your massive bleeding massive loss of blood. So, yung bleeding may be from your wound, external wound, vascular injury, or bleeding from your hemothorax, or bleeding from um, injury to your solid organs, or injury to your large vessels intra-abdominally. So, paano natin malalaman doon? Paano natin malalaman yung patient is having hemorrhagic shock? So, if the patient arrives at the emergency room, VA. So, so vital signs pa lang. If the patient is having hemorrhagic shock, the patient is hypotensive and tachycardic as compensatory response to your hypotension because of your massive blood loss. And yun, yung, yung gamit natin is you must investigate kung saan galing yung bleeding. So, yung, yun yung gamit ng ABCDE, yung primary survey. So, you must check yung extremities kung meron bleeding vessels ba, baka ba yung transect na ugat. <clears throat> okay? Then, if wala, examine natin yung chest. Baka may multiple rib fractures, baka may hemothorax, yun yung cost ng blood loss natin. Check natin yung abdomen. If the patient is having signs of retinal irritation, patient is having uh, direct and rebound tenderness on the quadrants, baka nagihimu, may guarding yung abdomen, may nakikita tayong uh, telltale, cell, telltale signs of uh, blunt abdominal trauma. So, may abrasions or may contusions abdominal wall, may guarding abdomen, may direct and rebound tenderness on the quadrant abdomen. So, most likely may intra-abdominal injury. So, yun. Um, after natin malaman kung saan galing, yun, dun na tayo mag, mag plan for management. If vascular injury, so vascular repair, direct to or if um, hemothorax so there's we need to decompress so chest tube if massive yung hemothorax so may table dun sa schwartz ano yung indication ng open thoracotomy sa hemothorax so yung initial drain diba? yung initial drain if more than 2 liters or if 300 cc per hour for the next 2 to 3 hours so open thoracotomy Next, if may hemoperitoneum, so if physical examination pa lang, may guarding na. But if um, we have suspicions pa lang of, of hemoperitoneum, may, may history ng patient of blunt abdominal trauma, we can do what we call yung past um, focused abdominal sonography for trauma to check if may fluid collection. So if may fluid collection, if may may lalo na pag massive so all quadrants of the abdomen may fluid collection and may history ng blunt abdominal trauma and the patient is um, unstable so that's an indication for exploratory laparotomy kasi kahit hanapin natin kung anong cost ng bleeding kahit tayo mag insert ng chest tube pero kung hindi natin nagko-control yung source ng bleeding walang gamit so yun, source control. Hanapin natin yung source of bleeding and stop it. Next, um, cardiogenic shock. So, anong possible cause ng cardiogenic shock? Pwede yung blunt um, chest trauma can cause cardiogenic shock. And 
um, pwede din cardiogenic shock yung tension pneumothorax. So, decreased preload because of your obstruction of your venous inflow to your heart. Cardiac tamponade can also cause shock by decreasing your cardiac output, by restricting your restricting din yung preload. Durogenic shock um, this, are, this is caused by spinal cord injury. So, yung nangyayari dito, yung patient is hypotensive, but the patient is normal cardiac. So, walang compensatory sympathetic response. For um, disability naman, so, we can investigate for any, cranial, uh, any injury to your, to your brain. Um, first, Via initially for via your GCS or Glasgow Coma Scale. So, diba na basa na nito. So, it is composed of your may three parts yan yung eye opening, verbal, and motor. So, basahin yung components. So, eye opening if the patient is pag E4, may spontaneous eye opening. Then, may pababa ng pababa eye opening to to speech na lang, then eye opening to pain na lang, then walang response. Sa verbal, na, sa verbal naman, may, may coherent, coherent yung patient, nakakausap ng maayos, then pababa ng pababa, incoherent yung patient, words na lang, sounds na lang, then until wala ng response. Sa motor naman, may patient follows commands. So, kung anong sasabihin nyo, sinusunod agad ng pasyente. Then pababa ng pababa, localizes to pain na lang, flexes, <clears throat> um, withdraws to pain na lang, then pwede tayo mag-decorticate, decerebrate, and until zero or one, the lowest score is one pala, wala nang response in patient. So the highest score is 15, the lowest is three. So we can assume if bagsak yung GCS, possible it can be caused by um, intoxication, drug induced or alcohol induced, and if not, it may be caused by um, injury to your brain, parenchyma, or it may be caused by intra or extracerebral um, fluid collection, so subdural and epidural hemorrhage. So, any patients with um, blunt trauma require cervical spine immobilization. So, all patients coming in at the emergency room, na trauma patients, must be considered as having cervical spine injury until proven otherwise. So, dapat may spine immobilization except for penetrating the wounds. Okay? Kasi kailangan mong... Um, hanapin yung cost ng bleeding, kailangan mong identify. Then, evaluate for abnormal voice, abnormal breath sounds, tachypnea, or altered mental status. So, abnormal voice, baka may tracheal, laryngotracheal injury. If, let's say, may expanding hematoma sa neck, baka may vascular injury. Abnormal breath sounds, baka may stridor, so may obstruction, upper airway obstruction. If the patient is tachypneic, baka may obstruction yung upper airway. Or the patient has altered mental status. So if the patient is hypoxic, so it can cause hypoxic encephalopathy, causing your altered mental status. Baka wala siya lang intrinsic injury sa utak. But because of your obstruction, may hypoxic encephal, so altered yung mental status ng patient. So kaya importante yung airway management. Yan yung pinakauna. To make sure, you must make sure the patient has adequate oxygenation from the thing sa ER. So these are the indications for establishing definitive airway. So if the patient is apneic, so syempre common sense, up din na nag patient. So you must establish an airway. Kailangan niya ng external support via um, black valve ventilation or mechanical ventilation. Inability to protect the airway due to altered GCS. So, pagbagsak yung GCS, GCS um, 
9 GCS, 8 below GCS, kailangan mo na ma-intubate yung patient. Improper airway, impending airway compromise due to inhalation or injury. Bakit impending? But because of inhalation or injury, it, it causes edema, laryngeal edema. So, nag-anticipate na tayo. Kailangan mo ma-secure agad yung airway bago pa dumating yun. Inability to maintain oxygenation. Um, for example, massive facial injury. So, hindi na makakasak yung oxygen. Um, in the patients with um, altered mental status, depressed yung sensorium, bagsak yung GCS. They can't breathe properly, regularly. They can't maintain proper um, oxygenation. So, kailangan na natin um, lagyan ng airway. So, paano yung airway management natin? So, we can do mesotracheal. Um, Pinaka-common is endotracheal intubation. So, nakakita na kayo ng endotracheal tube. So, yan yung most common um, na ginagawa natin sa ER. Usually, hindi kasi common yung mesotracheal and orotracheal intubation. So, yung most common is endotracheal intubation. So, it's... Now, ipinapasok yung ET tube sa bibig using your laryngoscope. And it is... The endotracheal tube is either attached to a bag valve ventilator or a mechanical ventilator to support, to um, give adequate oxygenation and to support the breathing of the patient kung hindi niya kayang humingat na. Next is cricothyroidotomy for extensive facial injury. But it's, it is contraindicated for pediatric populations under 11 years old because um, it, it may cause sublotic stenosis. And next is tracheostomy. So if upper airway, wala kang access, yung basag yung muka, wala kang paglalagyan ng endotracheal, nestracheal, or orotracheal tube, you can do tracheostomy to bypass those obstructions. So, yun. Um, upon inserting your endotracheal tube, you must note kung saan level. Meron kasi yan um, nakalagay na, na graduation per centimeter. So, make sure na symmetrical yung chest rise. It means yung tube mo nasa may trachea. Hindi siya nasa left or right main bronchi. So, both lung are given equal amounts of air. So, symmetry pa yung chest rise. Good breath sounds on both lungs. Ibig sabihin, maganda yung air entry and equal on both lungs. And no gurgling over the upper abdomen. Bakit? So, pag may gurglings, ginagamit mo kasi yung stethoscope. So, chinecheck mo and auscultate mo both both chest if my entry air and my air entry so kung equal okay the next is chest mo yung epigastric area as ko tit mo yung epigastric area pag may gurgling baka yung endotracheal tube mo instead na nasa trachea baka napasok mo sa esophagus okay so hindi yun dapat So, these are the immediate life-threatening injuries. Ayong mention ko earlier, under breathing. So, this compromises your breathing. So, your tension, your open pneumothorax, your massive air leak from brachial injury and frail chest. So, these, when examining a patient, um, trauma patient, at the emergency room, 
ito yung una-unahin uunahin mong i-check dapat. So at the back of your mind, um, when examining a trauma patient, kailangan mong i-rule out to lahat kasi ito yung most common cause ng morbidity and mortality. Okay? So ano yung mga findings ng tension pneumothorax? Physical exam findings ng tension pneumothorax. Breath sounds, put up and decrease vocal fremitus. Mm. Fremitus, what I can worry about. Fremitus, po, fremitus. Ah, fremitus. Um, for tension pneumothorax, BS wise, ang tingin mo pala, pagdating ng binigay sa iyo ng like triage nursing chart, please, doc, may dumating na trauma patient. So, ito yung vital signs. Mm yung details ng patient. Pag tingin mo pa lang na vital signs, yung patient is um, tachycardic and hypotensive. So, possible, if you're considering tension yung mothorax, diba, decrease yung cardiac output. So, magka-hypotension yung patient. Then, pag PE mo, decreased breath sounds. So, possible, may new mo. So, baka nga may tension yung mothorax yung patient. For open yung mothorax, same din. So, may decreased breath sounds. Uh, decreased or absent the sounds in patient. So it may be a sign of pneumothorax. Massive air leak. Um, if nakita mo na yung stab wound sa chest around um, within, the, within the chest wall, within the chest, within the, the chest, so kailangan din i-rule out yung tracheobronchial injury. Um, it may also have signs of pneumothorax, pneumo and hemothorax because of the penetrating wound. So upon auscultation, decrease the new breath sounds. Upon x-ray, meron kang um, opacity sa x-ray. So kailangan mo lagyan ng chest tube. And if paglagay mo ng chest tube, persistent pa rin yung bubbling, pwede, ka mag, pwede mong dis, despite ilang days na naka-chest tube, despite ng resolve na yung no yung chemothorax andun pa rin yung pneumo despite ni reposition ng natin lahat-lahat baka nga may tracheobronchial injury at para ma-confirm kailangan mo mo CT scan so for pre chest makikita mo yun via x-ray and via sa yun nga paradoxical breathing so for your tension pneumothorax ito decrease breath sounds we have your subcutaneous emphysema. So, what's your what is subcutaneous emphysema? So, you know, um, subcutaneous. So, there's air in your subcutaneous subcutaneous region because there's an uh, escape of air from coming from your pleural cavity. Magsisip siya pa kunta sa subcutaneous region. So, mahakapong masya para siyang parang parang nag crack 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 parang yung crepitus sa subcutaneous subcutaneous area so yun yung isa sa mga signs that may tell you na possible may pneumothorax in patient then add to that decreased pa yung breath sounds decreased or absent absent pa yung breath sounds so baka most likely meron ng um, pneumothorax in patient So yun, yung management natin is tube thoracostomy. So mid-axillary line, 4th to 5th ICS. You should avoid injury to your intercostal bundle. So paano? Asan yung location ng intercostal? Yung, ano yung location ng intercostal bundle? Asan banda sa rib? Diba nasa ilalim yan? So you must insert your tube above the rib to, to avoid injury to your intercostal bundle. So yun, mid axillary line, fourth or fifth ICS, above the rib, and it must be directed posterior superior. So 
So for your open pneumothorax, there's full thickness loss of your chest wall. So there's communication, as I've said earlier. Communication, direct communication between your um, pleural space and your environment. So your temporary management is occlusive dressing. So three sides to prevent tension pneumothorax. Bakit um, three sides? Para siyang one way valve. Um, lalabas yung air from your plural space para nakatip lang siyang sa square, kumbaga, yung tatlong sides lang, yung lalagyan mo ng plaster. Para yung air, lalabas pero walang papasok kasi one way valve siya. Lalabas yung air from your plural space pero walang papasok. But your definitive treatment is tube thoracostomy and closure of the chest fold defect. Pero yung mauuna, chest tube muna before you close your chest wall defect. Okay, not the other way around. So chest tube, after that, close mo yung defect. So yung frail chest, yung paradoxical breathing. Yung three or more contiguous ribs are fractured at least two locations. So, yun na yung sabi ko yung example ko, fractured second, third, and fourth rib, so contiguous ribs at multiple points. So, sa second, multiple areas ng second rib may fracture. So, yun. Um, isa pa, yung tracheobronchial injury causing air leak. So, lalabas yung ang-hangin from your tracheobronchial tree papunta sa plural space causing pneumothorax. We have your type 1 and type 2. Type 1, 2 centimeters from the carina. Type 2 is more distal injury causing pneumothorax. Um, aside from pneumothorax, lalo na pag type 1, if nasa taas-taas siya sa may carina banda, if there's an escape of air, dadaan din yan sa subcutaneous region. So, it may present also with subcutaneous emphysema. So, to confirm the extent and location of injury, you can do bronchoscopy. Next is your um, circulation. So, as I've mentioned earlier, from the thing ng trauma patient, um, establish the airway. Next is establish your IV peripheral access. Pero hindi to step by step. This may kailangan tong gawin simultaneously. Okay? So hindi dapat airway muna tapos circulation. So habang nag-establish ng airway, yung trauma team nag-establish din ng, ng IV access. So pagdating ng ER, Sabi ng sabi na sabi ng sabi ni Schwartz, any episodes of hypotension, um, it should alert you that it may be caused by hemorrhage. Hemorrhage anywhere from the body, external or internal, okay? Kaya kailangan ng IV access for resuscitation. Initially, by using your isotonic, your plane LR, your lactated winger. And if there's um patient is unresponsive. Kailangan ng bigyan ng, um, ng blood. So there's your massive transfusion protocol. Pero may, may meron tayong term, wala yan sa Schwartz, na sa ATLS, your permissive hypotension. Sabi nila, hindi dapat aggressive yung resuscitation. Yung dapat aggressive ka kung hana, nahanapin yung source ng hemorrhage. Hindi masyado sa resuscitation, but hanapin yung source ng hemorrhage. Bakit? If transfuse, if bigay ng big... Oh, sorry. Huh? Okay. 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 Okay.
ng bolus ka ng bolus, hindi pa rin mataas yung oxygen, oxygen carrying capacity nun. And if bigay ng bigay ka lang ng fluid, it can dislodge. Pag mataas, um, pag no overload mo siya, it can dislodge um, clots that may have been um, tam causing tam tamponad sa mga possible na source ng bleeding. So instead of aggressively resuscitating, you should identify kung saan yung source ng bleeding, stop that, and from there, um, continue yung resuscitation. Um, yung, kung mahanap mo kung yung source ng bleeding, for example, if um, vascular injury, so legate, if thoracic injury, thoracostomy, hanapin mo kung yung source ng bleeding, if intraabdominal bleed, if bleeding yung may liver or splenic injury, kailangan mong control yung bleeding by via repair. Okay? Um, so, yung illustration nito, uh, this is yung level of SBP na mapapalpate mo yung carotid, radial, and femoral pulse. So, if 70 millimeters mercury pa yung BP, you can you can still palpate yung femoral pero hindi mo na mapapalpate yung, yung radial and carotid. Pag 60, carotid na lang kung hindi mo na makapalpate yung radial tapos femoral. So parang estimate to. If ever wala kayong walang tawag nun. If ever walang walang sphygmo or walang available na apparatus. Parang to estimate na palpable pa yung pulses. Pag palpable pa yung femoral, most likely 70 millimeters mercury yung BP. Pero pag cold climbing na yung nakapalpate mo na lang yung carotid, most likely 60 millimeters mercury na lang. So it needs, kailangan maging aggressive ko na sa resuscitation and source and to locate yung source of bleeding. So these are the sources of um, hemorrhage, so your massive hemothorax, your cardiac tamponade, your massive hemoperitoneum, hemoperitoneum and unstable um, pelvic fractures. So ito yung massive hemothorax, um, 1,500 ml of blood na may evacuate mo upon inserting your chest tube. If you insert your chest tube and initially, immediately 1,500 yung lumabas, that's an indication for open thoracostomy. Ibig sabihin, may vascular injury ka doon na kailangan mong i-control, kailangan mong ilagay, kailangan mong hanapin. Um, another one is, may 300 cc ka na drainage every hour for the next 2 to 3 hours. Ibig sabihin, kailangan mo din buksan kasi may vascular injury, kailangan mong uh, i-control yung bleeding. So the only reliable means to quantify your hemothorax is not by x-ray, but by your um, inserting your chest tube. Hello, Doc. So next, um, cardiac tamponade. 
So what is cardiac tamponade? Yeah, have any idea about cardiac tamponade? Happens block my fluid the uh, I mean uh, space and uh, pericardial space tama ba? Kaya nagkataroan ng pressure against the heart. Okay, so you so there's I uh, um tawon there's increased abnormal amount of fluid ay mo pericardial space lalo na pag acute yung fluid collection um, as little as 100 ml uh, fluid in the pericardial space can cause cardiac tamponade pero pag chronic maabot pa yan ng 250 to 500 so the patient can still come the patient in the course of his or her disease disease nakaka-adjust ng patient pero pag acute onset lalo na pag trauma as little as 100 can cause symptoms such as yung <clears throat> it can cause shock, decrease yung cardiac output, um, decrease yung sensorium, cold clammy yung extremities. It can it and it may um, in the end cause heart failure. So what's yung what are the signs of your cardiac tamponade? So we have your back triad. So first we have dilated yung neck veins. So, bakit dilated yung neck veins? So, dilated yung neck veins kasi um, the, the massive or the increased amount of pericardial fluid restricts your um, <coughs> restricts the heart's ability to pu adequately pump blood away from the heart. So, there's parang congestion. So, hindi makababa yung yung blood from your SVC or, or inferior vena cava. So, so there's distension of your um, external jugular veins or superficial veins on the egg. Muffled your heart, muffled yung heart tone because of your fluid collection. So, mas malaki yung space from your skin to your heart then in between and dun yung fluid collection. So, hindi masyadong marinig yung heart. And there's decline in arterial pressure because yun nga, and decrease in cardiac output from your from the decreased preload because the, the blood cannot cannot properly fill in adequate amount of blood or your heart cannot fill in adequate amount of blood because of your the restrictive effects of your pericardial fluid so the immediate management is pericardial synthesis the location left fifth ICS parasternal area. So yun, left fifth ICS parasternal area um, directed 45 degrees yung angle to your left. Um, yan yung, pero ngayon, most, yung ginagawa na kasi natin is ultrasound guided. So hindi na strict yung ganyang landmarks. So kung asan yung may pinakamagandang window for pericardiosynthesis, Dun ta dun tayo so, um, ito yung parang algorithm for patients coming in that. Um, patients coming in na arrested, okay? So, until, ano yung gagawin natin? If we, we misproceed with thoracotomy, if, or um, ipopronounce na natin na clinically expired yung patient, or ano yung gagawin natin? After a finding na may blunt or penetrating chest injury yung patient. So, for patients undergoing CPR and no signs of life, um, for blunt trauma, we can continue CPR for less than 10 minutes. If penetrating naman, less than 15. 
if may penetrating non-torso trauma, so less than 15, and if walang, despite CPR, walang signs of life, and yun, we may proceed to pronounce the patient as clinically dead. And if nag-improve yung patient, we may proceed to resuscitative thoracotomy. So we may do uh, a anterior we may do an anterolateral thoracotomy incision. We can do manual compression of the heart. At the same time, we may find or we may locate the possible course of the injury. And if my cardiac activity and if the cause is tamponad, we may repair the heart, we may evacuate the tamponad. And if the cause is thoracic hemorrhage, so because open naman yung thorax natin, kaya at the same time, diagnostic, it is also therapeutic and resuscitative, 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 resuscitative at the same time. So we, we can do manual compression. At the same time, inahanap natin yung cause ng injury, ng cause ng shock. So if tamponad, repair the heart, evacuate the cause of tamponad. If thoracic hemorrhage, control the source of bleeding. So may vascular injury, hanapin, negate, evacuate the bleed. If my air emboli, ito yung hilar x clamp kla clamp natin yung hilum para hindi na magproceed yung yung air papunta pa sa uh, sa pulmonary vasculature and if extra thoracic yung hemorrhage um uh, we may control control locate and control the hemorrhage and if the sbp is still dropping less than 70 apply your aortic X clamp. So clamp the aorta to prevent further bleeding. And if the patient is still alive by, that, by then, so dun tayo sa operating room para complete yung setup and complete yung gamit. So ito, sa, at, sa year level to lahat ginagawa. Usually sa mga high, mga high end centers sa US, pero dito, wala tayong gamit to do this. So yun. Ito yung resuscitative thoracotomy. So at the year level pa lang, if the patient is presenting with shock, you can do this. So fifth ICS, anterolateral approach. Yun nga, nakikita nyo manual compression of the heart. Hanapin yung possible causes of the injury, clamp, legate, control the bleeding. Then, pag controlled lahat, if viable pa yung patient, diretso sa OR for definitive repair. So, these are the indications and contraindications for emergency department um, thoracotomy. So, na mention na yun kanina sa uh, algorithm, magbasahin nyo na lang ulit sa shorts. So for him, hemorrhage control, so labs that to be, to be taken, your ABG, para malaman natin kung acidotic na yung patient. So um, it will alert us na kailangan aggressive na yung, yung resuscitation natin. Cross matching for the blood, coagulation panel, um, to check if the patient has other uh, problems with coagulation contributing to bleeding. And if we may do um, a definitive repair, if may bleeding problem, kailangan natin magsali ng FFP, kailangan natin magsali ng platelet, etc. Intervention, um, secondary access and correct acidosis. Secondary access, um, we can um, insert central line aside from your peripheral line. So, ito yung triad of death, acidosis, hypothermia, and coagulopathy. So, one factor causes the other, and it is a cycle, um, a continuous cycle, na pag ma, may, may mangyari na tong tatlo, mahirap na ma-reverse. Kaya yan yung kailangan natin i-prevent. Acidosis, hypothermia, and coagulopathy. Acidosis through proper resuscitation, proper hydration, hypothermia. So, kailangan yung patient nasa um, warm blanket or na, nasa <coughs> bililay 
coagulopathy if delusion, delusional, so if we need aggressive resuscitation via your massive transfusion protocol. So we transfuse your PRBC, one is to one is to one, PRBC to platelet to FFP. Next, um, your disability. So we have your intracranial hemorrhage and cervical spine injury. So if high spinal cord injury, it is uh, it has a high risk for neurogenic shock. So your neurogenic shock presents with bradycardia and hypotension. Kasi yung normally pag hindi naman pag shock caused by um, hemorrhage or or um, usually sa trauma kasi hemorrhagic shock. So pag hypotension with it causes a compensatory sympathetic response, tachycardia dapat. But pag yung patient hypotensive and brady, so you should suspect for a possible um, neurogenic shock. And aside from that, upon physical examination, what are the signs? What are the your PE pag may spinal cord injury? So first, um, patient has priapism. So ibig sabihin, the penis is erect. So walang um, parasympathetic. Um, <clears throat> um, parasympathetic control. So na, aside from that, decreased din yung rectal tone. And the patient may present with 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 quadriplegia or paraplegia. So ito yung summary ng Glasgow Coma Scale. So depending on the on the um, reading, ma so score ma identify natin yung patient as having severe, mild, moderate, or severe um, yung head injury. So for severe head injury, GCS of less than eight, um, intubation is already warranted. Kasi the patient can no longer. <clears throat> so for severe head injury, for GCS of eight or less, kailangan na natin intubate because the patient can no longer breathe on his or her own. Depressed na sensorium, depressed na yung, yung um, brain stem ng patient. So, yung breathing niya is usually erratic. Minsan, apnic niya yung patient. So, kailangan na ng mechanical support. Ano yan for
<clears throat> so next um we move on to shock so what are the um classical signs and symptoms of shock so we have the tachycardia hypotension but if neurogenic brady takip niya alternate status tachycardia because of the priority ng body is to shift your blood supply diba papunta sa um tawon brain um lungs cardiac so decrease yung perfusion peripheral perfusion and pallor So we have your evaluation, your parameters, your observation. So if the patient is um, decreased yung sensorium, decreased GCS, pag less than usually, pag less than eight, heart rate if more than 100, tachycardic, hypotensive if your SVP is less than 90, or if there's a 30 millimeter mercury fall in your baseline blood pressure. If the patient is tachypneic, so maka acidotic yung patient, tachypneic. If decrease in your urine output. For adults, the normal urine output, it must be more than 0.5 ml per kilo per hour. For child one, infant is two. So if bagsak yung urine output, ibig sabihin the patient is in shock. So decrease, if possible, decrease yung um, circulating blood volume. If possible, meron nagkakaroon na ng AKI, acute kidney injury. So the, the kidney is no longer functioning well, decrease the urine, produce the urine, decrease the urine output. Um, this is your classifications of hemorrhagic shock, class one, two, three, and four. So you must Take note of this because most of the time, lumalabas to sa exam. Yung ginagawa, po, yun ang ginagawa namin is para hindi mahirap na memory. Is yung, yung binabantayan lang namin is your class 3. Sa class 3 kasi, um, 3, so respiratory rate is 3, 30 to 40. At class 3 kasi, decrease na yung BP. Sa class 3 din, anxious and confused na patient. And sa class 3, 1,500 to 2,000 yung blood loss. But pag magtanong sa exam or in real practice, if the patient presents with tachycardia na, most likely class 2 na yan. If the patient presents with decreased um, urine output, most likely um, class, um, class 3 na din yan. If the patient presents with um, tachypnea, significant tachypnea, most likely class 3. But if the patient is hypotensive, sigurado class 3 na yan in above. Mm, ito. Um, this is the... Mm -hmm. um, this is the estimated blood loss depending on the um, the location of your fracture. So per grade estimate blood loss 100 to 200 ml, tibia 300 to 500 Femur, 800 to 1,000, and pelvis, 2,000 ml. Kaya, I mentioned earlier, one of the most important things na to identify when you have when you are presenting, um, when a patient is pretend, presenting with hemorrhagic shock is to look for pelvic fracture, pelvic instability. And to note sa x-ray kung meron pelvic fracture, kasi nga, pag may pelvic fracture, estimated blood loss is around 2,000 ml. And sa pelvic fracture din, lalo na pag nasa baba, injuries of pubic ramay, 
Um, it can also cause injury to your bladder and urethra. And yung iba, pag may injury sa bladder, lalo na pag blunt abdominal trauma, it may cause rupture. So pag grade, grade 4 bladder injury, is greater than 2 cm rupture sa intraperitoneal, intraperitoneal bladder, it may cause spillage of urine intra-abdominally and the patient may present with um, uh, peritoneal signs, surgical abdomen. And for green for bladder injury, kailangan niyan ng immediate exploratory laparotomy. Kailangan mong buksan yung patient. So for pelvic injury, dalawa yung babantayan. It may cause hemorrhagic um, um, blood loss, hemorrhagic shock. And second, it may injure yung genitourinary system and also your um, lower rectum and anus. <clears throat> so for your trans um, persistent hypotension, so it yung tao na dun, yung um, illustration na to. Illustration. Parang brief summary lang to on what are um, the causes. Ano yung mga subcategories ng different types of shock? And at ano yung causes ng shock? Like for example, ito, cardiac. Um, the patient may present with body and tachyarrhythmias. If loss of blood volume, ito, hemorrhagic or, hemorrhagic or traumatic hemorrhagic shock. And as I mentioned earlier, um, if the patient has signs, seen signs and symptoms of shock, kailangan hanapin yung cause. And kailangan din identify kung anong cause of shock. So yung most common is your hemorrhagic, cardiogenic, and neurogenic shock. And this, despite, your, despite resuscitation, persistent pa rin yung hypotension, so identify ba hindi mo na hindi, hindi mo na hanap yung source of bleeding so yun nga you must investigate further baka intrathoracic intraabdominal or may bleeding sa extremity possible cardiogenic may pulmonary embolism or may cardiac tamponade or neurogenic baka may spinal cord injury in patient so you must identify So, any potential sources of blood? So, yung thorax, abdomen, pelvis, spreading extremities, yung brain. So, for persistent hypotension, um, if mentioned... Sorry. Uh, the name of my... So, if persistent, persistent yung hypotension despite resuscitation. So, as I mentioned earlier, investigate kung saan yung cause. Um, one modality is pinakamabilis is ultrasound. Ultrasound your pericard, yung your pleura, your abdomen. For your abdomen, you can do your fast. For play, you can do your plain radiograph. So, such as x ray, may kita mo kung may fluid conduction. So, may hemo or pneumo. Sa pelvis, if may pelvic fracture, so alam naman natin ang more than 2,000 liters pag may pelvic fracture. CBP, if decreasing CBP, base deficit in serum LDH, if you're suspecting shock, so acidotic in patient. Next is um, secondary survey. So after you have done your ABCDEs 
after you have resuscitated your patient, after na manage mo na yung patient stable, you can do your secondary survey and history. So, ito yung mnemonic, yung ample, allergy, medications, past medical, last oral intake, and on yung events and environment that may have contributed to the um, injury of the patient. So, when you do all trauma patients, yung yung format is your itong noy doy toy poy yung nature of the injury if it is a motor vehicular crash if motor vehicular crash i note mo kung pedestrian ba to versus uh, motorcycle or motorcycle ba to pero nag crash lang sa pavement or motorcycle bumangga sa motorcycle the date and time of injury and the place of injury um for medical for medical legal purposes and at the same time para alam mo kung ilan ilang hours na or ilang minutes na yung lumipas since the onset of the injury. So yun um, under secondary survey. So check mo din if anong mga <coughs> na miss out mo. So, thorough, ex thorough examination na. So, you can do your um, exam, examine your axilla, if may hematoma, may um, may puncture wound. Yung mga na most of the time na, look, na overlook mo na areas like the back. So, kailangan mong i-barrel roll yung patient, tingnan mo yung likod, may injury sa likod, baka may stab site or gunshot wound ka doon hindi nakita. Sa perineum, tingnan mo kung may um, signs of urethral injury. So, what are the signs of your, your, your urethral injury? First, if may blood ka sa miatus. Second is if may hematoma ka sa perineum. Um, third, if um, high riding yung prostate mo. Pag DRA mo, mataas yung prostate and normal. So, most likely baka may urethral injury ka. So, kung may urethral injury ka, wag mong pilitin lagyan ng FBC. Okay? Pero sa may nabasa kaming libro sa urology na book, pwede nang maglagay ng FBC pero kailangan endoscopically guided or pwede one try lang. Pero if hindi mo malagyan ng FBC sa first try, wag na. Pero for exam purposes and most of the time sa conferences namin, pag may urethral injury, the safest is wag, wag maglagay ng FBC because it may cause further harm than good. Next, you must, for all trauma patients, kailangan mag-digital rectal exam kayo. So sa DRE mo, pwede mo ma-check if kanina, na-mention ko, pag may neurogenic injury, lacks yung sphincter. Okay? If you're considering urethral injury, baka high riding yung prostate. If you're considering a possible rectal injury, may blood ka sa examining finger. So, marami yung makakapa mo sa DRE. Um, ito, compartment syndrome. Um, the patient may present with pain, pallor, paresthesia, pulselessness, poikilothermia, and paralysis. So, yung nangyayari dito, there's in your, because of a possible um, there's increased pressure sa isang muscle compartment. So, yung cost ng increased pressure possible from your inflammation or edema, secondary pa, pwede secondary to electrical injury. So, it can, it causes edema sa muscle. Pwede blood, accumulation of blood, pwede vascular injury. So, yung pathology yan, mataas yung pressure sa compartment. It, it compresses your, your neurovascular bundle. So, yung signs and symptoms mo is related to your injuries sa neuromuscular bundle. So, sa vascular bundle, yun nga, decreased yung pulse, may uh, may pallor ka, yun. Sa neuro, sa nerves naman, may paresthesia ka, etc. etc. So, the treatment for your compartment syndrome is fasciotomy para ma-release niya yung pressure. So, pag present itong mga signs, you can say 
possible may compartment injury ka, a compartment syndrome ka, and you can plan ahead kung kailangan mong makashoot ng patient. So, ito yung mga ringy requests na laboratory examinations for trauma patients. For critically injured patients, routine yan, CBC, blood chemist, CBC and blood typing. So, CBC, ilang naman natin yung hemoglobin, baka bagsak na yung hemoglobin doon sa blood loss. Labi lalo na pag more than 6 hours na yung injury. WBC, pag... May other sources of uh, possible infection or mataas yung, w, mataas yung WBC mo because yung, yung parang leukemoid response from your injury, blood chemistry, electrolytes, creatinine. Creatinine if you're considering possible AKI, kidney injury from baka primary injury to your kidney from direct, direct injury, blunt or penetrating. Pwede din injury to your kidney secondary to blood loss. So, decreased perfusion, it may cause AKI. So, mataas yung kriya. So, yung may, parang may suspect siya ka na nga pa, so may kidney injury. Um, electrolytes. So, pag may losses ka, lalo na pag may injuries ka sa gastric or small bowel injury. So, lalabas yung gastric and bowel contents sa stomach, sa abdomen. So, losses yun. So, it will, it will reflect, re reflect um, with... Uh, with your one, blood chemistry, so mag-hypokalimia ka, hyponatremia. Coagulation series, <clears throat> ABG to check if acidotic and urine, urinalysis um, not so. Dali man lang kami na request urinalysis. So for your imaging, um, as I mentioned earlier, chest and pelvic radiographs, CT scan of the spine, if you're considering spinal cord injury, and past focus of domain sonography for trauma. Most, most especially if you're um, entertaining a blunt abdominal trauma. So, ano yung hinahanap mo sa past? So, yung hinahanap mo sa past is fluid collection. So, if you're my fluid collection, um, sa, it's either sa hepaturinal recess, sa spleenurinal recess, sa pelvis, and sa pericardium. So, trauma, trauma kasi yan. So, least, least likely na ascites lang yan. So, most likely baka blood yan or gastric contents. So, baka may injury sa loob na it may alarm nyo. Kailangan siya kukarahan. Then, if sa initial um, fast mo, parang mali, may fluid collection pero minimal. Pero may abdominal pain yung patient, pero soft abdomen. But you can repeat the fast after, repeat fast after six hours to compare if um, nag-increase yung water, nag-increase yung fluid collection, if same pa rin. <clears throat> For gunshot wounds, and any penetrating wound, kailangan may lateral. Okay? So, AP and lateral to, to check for the trajectory. Para maya, parang ma, mayroon ka lang, um, parang 2D or 3D, 3D image ng trajectory ng, ng, <coughs> ng insulting agent. And if gunshot, kailangan mong lagyan ng mark yung entrance and exit wound. Again, to check, to check kung ano yung trajectory ng, ng bala. So, these are the difference of yung me mechanisms and patterns of injury for penetrating and blunt. For penetrating, yung injury is usually localized to the path of the bullet or knife. On blunt, widely distributed yung injury. For the penetrating, the organs with the largest surface area. So, ano yung pinakamalaki na surface area sa abdomen? Yung small bowel. Okay? So, so blunt, usually, yung most commonly injured organ is your solid organs. Most commonly, yung liver. So, ito yung... Um, 
<clears throat> types of penetrating injuries. You have your stab, your gunshot, your shotgun, your, your blunt, um, any um, high energy transfer from like um, them, mauling or or parang any 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 force applied to the body that causes um, injury sa intra abdominal organs or intra thoracic organs. So for your head injury. The mechanisms and patterns of injury. For your head injury, we have your closed head, so the skull is intact. Open head, the skull is penetrated. Penetrating trauma. Um, when as same as abdomen, your skull is breached, and there's a um, down, there's a instrument that caused the penetration of the skull. Contusion. It is um, a minor injury, bruising lung or bleeding into the brain tissue. But hemorrhage, there's extravasation of blood. Depending on the location, it can be intracerebral, um, causing caused by damage of your intracerebral vessels, arteries. For your subdural, um, it is caused by bleeding from your um, the most common cause of uh, uh, subdural hemorrhage is bleeding from your middle meningeal vein, subarachnoid, bleeding from your um, intraparenchymal, intracerebral vein, uh, intracerebral vessels, or epidural from your bleaching um, cerebral veins. Um, diffuse axonal injury naman, um, it, is where, it is when the brain cells are stretched and injured by rapid rotational movements of the head. So, sa CT scan, you should, parang wala kang masyadong makikita sa CT scan. Walang bleeding. Yung mismo, yung, yung cells mismo, parang cellular level yung damage ng injury. So, kumbaga, yung connection smith, interaction na connection mismo ng brain cells, yun yung na-damage because of the um, velocity of the injury. So, hindi siya bleeding, walang hemorrhage walang increased ICP, walang penetration, just the high velocity ng head injury nag cause ng cellular level na damage. So, diffuse axonal injury, the patient, lalo na pag severe, um, it can cause, um, it can present with de severely depressed sensorium, yung nga less than GCS8, and the plan and the management for diffuse action and injury is hindi, hindi yan inooperahan kasi cellular level yung damage, usually supportive lang. Um, in contrast to hemorrhages, is lalo na depending on, depending on the amount, yung management is evacuation of the hematoma. So for your head injury, pag penetrating, tapos andun ka naman sa far flung areas, walang CT scan, you can do your plain skull film. Pero pag andito ka, CT scan is yung, yung must ideal. So, mas makikita mo aside from your bone window, makikita mo kung may parenchymal injury or may blood collection. So these are the features in CT scan to be that you need to identify. So blood clots, yung ito yung mnemonic BCBBB. Blood can be very bad. So blood clots, it can be extra dural, subdural or intraparenchymal within the brain. Uh, titingnan mo yung cisterns, yung brain parenchyma. If there's still um, Sulcer or gyre differentiation, makikita mo yung convolutions. You can see your cerebral edema. Yung diffuse axonal injuries usually presents with parang hindi na hindi na well differentiated yung yung gray and white matter, parang namawala. Tapos may punctate hemorrhages sa CT scan. If ventricles, if normal or dilated, baka nag-hydrocephalus, 
lalo na pag the patient has um, subarachnoid hemorrhage, others present with hydrocephalus, and bone if there's any fracture. So, yung important to note lang, if the volume is 20 to 30 ml, um, the patient must may be, uh, must be taken to the operating room for surgery for evacuation of the hematoma. Because pag malaki yung volume ng blood sa loob, pag malaki yung volume ng blood sa loob, it causes increased intracranial pressure. Diba? Because the skull is immobile and your brain parenchyma is um, parang soft and pliable. So pag malaki yung volume sa loob ng blood, compress yung brain parenchyma. It causes injury to your brain. It, and it may cause herniation. The most deadly is herniation of your brain stem. And it may cause demise of your patient. So to relieve the, the brain of your uh, the increased pressure from your blood formation, so you must evacuate the blood through surgery. So these are the difference between your extradural and subdural. So for, for your extradural, it is from your middle meningeal for your subdural it is from your venous uh, it is a uh, venous bleed so ito ito yung epidural Ep yung right dun, right hemisphere yan yung epidural yung left is your subdural epidural epidu epidural is um thousand um crescentric and parang uh, moon shape yung subdural. Your epidural is your epidural is from your bleeding from your middle meningeal artery, and your subdural is bleeding from your um, bridging veins. And the indications for operation. Yung mentioned kanina amount if it is at most 30 ml if there is midline shift and if there is decreased um, GCS. Um, next one we have your neck. Um, your neck is divided into three zones: your zone one, zone two, and zone three. For your zone one, it is um, between the level of your clavicular head and thoracic outlet. Your zone 2 is located between your clavicle and the angle of the mandible. And zone 3 is above the angle of the mandible. Depending on the location, mag-iiba yung management. So, ito yung algorithm na siya Schwartz yan. So, you must take note. For hemodynamically unstable patients, kailangan operahan agad. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, if there's um, injury or bleeding that's significant that causes hypotension or tachycardia. And hindi kayang mag- hindi pwede na conservative yung management. Kailangan hanapin, kailangan i-control. Okay? Hindi lang yan sa penetrating neck, penetrating neck injury, pati sa chest and sa abdomen. Mapansin mo, pag unstable yung patient, over yan agad. If stable naman yung patient, um, oh, and I forgot to mention, if the patient is hemodynamically unstable and may hard signs of, of, of injury to your ear digestive tract, so what are your hard, hard signs? Your uncontrolled hemorrhage, that may end, massive hemoptysis, and rapidly expanding yung patoma. So, kailangan ma-explore agad yung neck, hanapin yung source, and yun. For hemodynamically stable patients naman, there's still room for um, conservative, hindi naman conservative management. There's still room to, there's still, there's still room for um, investigation. Kaya na napagsak science lang yung presentation ng patient. So, 
to investigate further kung ano yung source ng injury, we can do your CT angiogram of the neck and chest. And if my findings sa CT angiogram ng kahit injury sa bronchus, sa esophagus, or trachea, we can do operative um, exploration. And if may nakita ng injury sa zone 3, we can do, lalo na pag vascular injury, we can do angioembolization. But for asymptomatic patients, for those na may injury sa zone 3, we can observe. And if sa zone 1, for asymptomatic patients, again, we can do angiogram, bronchoscopy, or esophagoscopy. Ito. Yung zone 1 kasi, malapit doon yung major vessels, andun yung, yung trachea, yung esophagus. So, to rule out any injury, we can do CTA, um, esophagoscopy, and bronchoscopy. But sa zone 2, pag transcervical yung gunshot wound, ibig sabihin through and through, again CTA, but if asymptomatic naman, we can observe the patient for progression of symptoms. But if the symptoms progress, so nagkaroon na ng soft, heart, soft signs muna na naging hard signs or naging unstable yung patient, nagpersist yung, yung bleeding, nang, nagkaroon ng hematoma, nag, yung patient will present na with dysphagia, dysnea, um, upper airway obstruction, so it necessitates exploration na. So ito, these are ito yung example ng zone two ni zone two injury between the angle of the mandible and your thoracic kidney. Ah, clavicle pala, sorry. So pag penetrating, hindi na yan kailang, hindi na yan pwedeng i-conservatize. So most likely may injury yan sa loob. And you need to remove the foreign body. So you need to do exploration. So for um, specific na to na diagnostic um, tests. So for your chest, um, kanina, yung simple na history and PE lang. Um, but if doubtful ka, if, um, tawag nun, if, nga, if doubtful ka and, and kailangan pa ng Hindi, hindi ka pa sure kung saan galing or ano yung possible cause, source ng injury sa loob, you can do other diagnostic examinations like your chest x-ray or your chest CT scan to properly identify your parenchyma, your picobronchial tree, or you can do angiogram to identify any vascular injuries. Pero most of the time, sa ear pa lang, PE pa lang, makikita mo na Diba, yung importante nung hanapin sa chest, ah, sa breathing, yung open yung motorax, tension yung motorax, take yung bronchial fistula, yung flail chest, PE pa lang, malalawan mo na yan. Pero adjunct yung kahit simple yung x-ray, pwede na. So, ito yung kicked hemothorax. So, yung kick chemothorax is um, persistent chemothorax um, despite nag-insert ka na ng chest tube, uh, nag-drain ka, pero persistent, persistent pa rin yung drainage. So, nag-drain, nag nag-insert ka na naman ng another chest tube. So, persistent pa rin yung drainage, yung bleeding. So, it, it, it necessitates immediate thoracotomy. Ibig sabihin, sa loob may problema may bleeding, may, may resected the vessel, or baka may, may lung injury ka that needs repair. So, CTT, CTT will not suffice. For the abdomen naman, um, physical examination. So, we have, we can first do inspection. 
inspection if may foreign body, if may stab wound, may gunshot wound, if may abrasion back or may contusion, baka blunt abdominal trauma, your palpation. If tingnan mo kung surgical abdomen, so may direct tenderness and rebound, so may peritoneal irritation, most likely baka may mispillage sa loob, either gastric or intestinal contents that causes peritoneal irritation, um, necessitating open uh, laparotomy. Okay? Other than that, um, if blunt, you can also do fast. So, para makita ko yung fluid collection. And if massive yung fluid collection, in conjunction with your physical examination of my peritoneal signs, um, exploratory, exploratory laparotomy is indicated. So, sa abdomen, yung dalawa na findings that necessitates um, immediate exploratory laparotomy is one, if may abdominal rigidity ka. So, if may peritonitis ka, sure na yan na may problema sa loob kasi may peritonal irritation. Okay? Probably from um, gastric or intestinal content spillage, probably if may blood injury ka from urine. Okay? Next, um, if may hemodynamic compromise. So, pag hypotensive, um, tachycardic, hypotensive, most likely baka may bleeding ka sa loob. That needs repair. Okay? So, dalawa. Pag may presence of abdominal rigidity and hemodynamic compromise, x lab. Pag wala, you can do further workup. Oh, anyman. So, for penetrating abdominal trauma, if unstable, parehas sa neck, OR. If stable, we can do further workup. For stab wound, pag back and flank, CT scan to check for retroperitoneal injuries. So, pwede <coughs> retroperitoneal structures. So, ano yung mga retroperitoneal structures? So, yung kidneys, ascending and descending colon, yung pancreas, or anterior abdominal stab wound, um, we can do local wound exploration. So, tingnan natin, bubuks, hanapin natin yung sugat, bubuksan natin, ipasok natin yung kamay, tingnan natin kung na-breach yung fascia. So, pag na-breach yung fascia, most likely nag, nakapasok yan yung instrument, yung knife or ano, stabbing instrument. So, most likely baka may injury sa loob. Coupled with serial examinations, so ano yung serial examinations? Pwedeng hemoglobin hematocrit. So, pag dra dropping yung hemoglobin, or increasing yung WBC, baka may ongoing infection from the um, spillage sa loob or may bleeding. So, it needs immediate OR. Okay? Another, pa may evisceration or peritonitis. As I mentioned earlier, sure na yan na may problema sa loob, so kailangan buksan. <coughs> For gunshot, pag anterior abdomen, gunshot, OR. Kasi sure yan na may tatamaan. Okay. Pag right upper quadrant, pwede kasi liver lang, tangential, so CT scan. Yun nga, pag tangential, back and flank, you can do CT scan. And if sa CT scan may nakita na may liver injury, or may kidney injury, or may hematoma, may expanding hematoma, um, the patient may need to be predicted upon. Ito naman yung blunt abdominal trauma. Pag Unstable, OR. Same sa lahat. Pag unstable, OR talaga. Pag positive yung fast, um, OR din. So, may fluid collection kasi sa loob. So, saan man galing yung fluid collection? So, most likely, baka may bleeding. Baka may liver and splenic injury na bleeding or baka may spillage from your gastric or intestines. So, OR. Pag may peritonitis, OR. Yan yung pinaka-basic. If wala, we can do further workup. We can do CT scan. And if nakita na may like may pneumoperitoneum, kung may ruptured viscous, if may fluid collection, if um, severe yung liver splenic injury, grade 3, grade 4, may renal uh, liver splenic injury, we can do um, OR. OR di happen.
um, ito yung diagnostic peritoneal lavage. So, yung DPL, we can do a, make, we insert a catheter sa peritoneal cavity and a syringe is, um, a 10 ml syringe is connected sa catheter. Mag-aspirate tayo. Titignan natin kung ano yung aspirate natin ng abnormal contents. So, if may aspirate tayo na na fecal contents, may may food contents, most likely may injury. Tapos, yung iba naman, yung aspirate natin na contents, pinapacheck natin sa laboratory. Okay? So, positive yung DPL mo, pag yung abnormal contents, ito yung findings. So, pag positive DPL, it can be an indication for laparotomy. Ibig sabihin, may breach yan sa small bowel or stomach. Or possible, may meron kang vascular injury. Possible, may injury ka sa liver spleen. So, these are the four areas um, ng FAST. Okay? Yung hepaturinal recess, perisplenic, subsyphoid, and suprapubic window. Pag e-fast, kasama na yung hemothorax. So, ano yung hinahanap sa fast? It is your fluid collection. That may be suggestive of possible um, hemoperitoneum or um, gastric or intest intestinal content spillage. So, yun. Okay. Right upper quadrant, fluid in yung hypoechoic area ng black, fluid collection, so, blood in yung subdefragmatic recess, suprapubic window, this is your bladder, subsyphoid window, ito yung pericardial fluid causing traumatic tamponad, so maraming collection, it, it, it impedes your cardiac um, feeling. So, counting slides na lang. Hasta six slide di ba kamo? Mga ten oh, slides. Okay, so pelvis na lang. Tapos, tomorrow, what time it you? It is your um, schedule tomorrow. 9 to 11 po, Doc. Oh, 9 to 11. Ah, okay. Sige, sige. Same lagi hapon nga, Zoom link. May da po bago, Doc. Nasend po ako. Ah, okay. Sige. So, for your pelvis, um, blunt injury to your pelvis may cause unstable fractures. So, pag pelvis fracture, pero ito'n blood loss, ba 2,000 cc. So, para makita natin kung may pelvis structure, pinaka-masagay, pinaka-malagmesis is X-ray. Then, for extremities, for, to evaluate your extremities, you can do fractures. For ligamentous disruption, joints, or neurovascular injury, did it makikita X-ray. So, pinaka-accurate pinaka, um, pinaka is your MRI. Ito, importante ni masabdan, these are your hard signs and soft signs of vascular injury. So, your hard sign of vascular injury, so we have your pulsatile hemorrhage, if absent yung pulse, and acute ischemia. Pag may hard signs ka vascular injury, it is, it, it is an indication for operative exploration. Pag may soft signs ka vascular injury, pwede, pag, pwede ka pang mag-work up. So, you can do CT angiogram. Okay. So, soft signs, significant hematoma, may thrill lang or brewy. So, you can do further work up. You can do Doppler, you can do angiogram. Pag makita sa angiogram, may complete transaction. So, kailangan ng repair. So, may, kumbaga, may panahon ka pa para mag-evaluate further. Pag ito, diretso na yun sa OR. So, tomorrow na lang, Andy. So that ends for this and that ends our first half of
our lecture on trauma. So the rest tomorrow na lang. So yun. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Doc. Okay.